second hour of the program. I understand that Ohio baseball baseball fan, most of you are in mourning today for Pete Rose, and I totally understand it. Um, I'm old enough to have watched him play and know about him and what an incredible baseball player he was. And it is complicated. And I was watching, I'll tell you a quick story. CB texted me, both of us, yesterday. I don't remember exactly what time. It probably maybe was in the 5 o'clock hour, once my phone started working. And he said that TMZ is reporting that Pete Rose has passed away. And nobody else had it. They had the exclusive. And I turn on SportsCenter at 6 o'clock. And it's Hannah Storm and Jay Harris anchoring. And they toss to... Eduardo Perez, Cincinnati native, Mm -hmm. grew up watching him, played for the Reds, not obviously with him. He's probably 30 years younger. Um, And he's doing the recap of the Mets and Braves doubleheader. And at the end of his live shot, he says, before they take it back to the studio, and they're just talking Mets and Braves now, there's no confirmation of Rose. He says on the air, hey, Jay, before we go, I just I just want to say, and it was he was getting emotional that I talked to my son or I talked to whether it's Pete's son, and he confirmed that, that Pete Rose has passed away. And it's a very, very tough time and a sad moment. And so Eduardo Perez breaks the news on SportsCenter, a former player doing the Mets and Braves, back to the studio. He tosses it back to the studio after saying this, And there's nothing. They can't say anything because neither Hannah or Jay or their producers or ESPN has it confirmed. So God forbid they take it as fact and it's not. That's a problem. Even though he had confirmed sources, family members and all that. And of course he was telling the truth as he knew it Mm -hmm. and he was right, but they have nothing. So Jay tosses over to Hannah She starts laughing it up with Herm Edwards talking about Monday Night Football, and there's nothing, and there's nothing, and nothing, and nothing. And they had a guy on a live shot that breaks the news to them, and they can't do anything. They come back from a commercial break, and they start talking about Dikembe Mutombo passing, which is is so sad. Two two days in a row. So sad. Two Two, massive names in their realms of the sporting world passed away. And, I, you know, in my mind – as I break off just a hair, you know, he was such a dominant player during the time before the three-second defensive rule came in. You could just pack it in there and just stay. Like, imagine a guy, exactly, the finger wave. And I do think he still would have been fairly effective even without that rule because he was fairly athletic. Yeah. Um, so, anyway, they, they do Dikembe Mutombo, and then they have to go to another commercial break. And I know, and after being in this world, I know exactly what they're going through. Until we confirm it, we can't report can't it. Can't roll with it. Now, they could, if they wanted to, quote TMZ. They could say, according to TMZ. But when you're ESPN, that's not exactly what you want to do. We got scooped, and we'll tell you why how we did. So by 6.30, they had it confirmed, and they came out and, and, and said it. And I, as I was watching this for a half an hour... I, I was, like, blown away, but that's how this world works. TMZ got it. To their credit, they got it, and they went with it. It's very unpopular, especially around here in, in Ohio, to keep him out of the Hall of Fame. It is. It, the masses loved him and knew what he stood for as far as a player, and everything he was as a player was legendary. And... I come back to the moment of that he just played this lie for so long because in my heart, I don't believe that he wanted to cause baseball harm. I, in my heart, I don't believe that he bet ever against his team, but I've also said on the air that not betting on them may be a vote of betting against them if he didn't think they could win that day. He violated the number one rule, which technically is 
we have to know these games are on the up and up. We have to know. And he may say, well, they are. They were. I never did anything. He lied about apparently betting on them as a player. He said he only bet on them as a manager. When they did the raid on the home, they found the notebook of that associate. There was evidence that would lead to the fact that he did bet on them while he was playing as well. And so we sit here today, and I guy had a three oh three batting average, forty two fifty six. There's nothing else to say other than he was one of the greatest players to ever step on a diamond. He was. And I part of me feels like he's maybe even more famous that he's not in the Hall of Fame because it kept him relevant for so many years, even though those records would keep certain relevancy. I try to ask myself, is it the same as the steroid guys? And I don't think it is, but I understand what I just said about the the integrity of the game. I've heard all the arguments. Every argument has some certainly good basis to it, that if he never bet on him to lose, if these guys are in the hall that have done worse outside the sport, and that we celebrate their accomplishments, even though they were bad human beings. And then you come back to, well, aren't we allowed to evolve at all? Um, But I sit here today saying that it would almost be more of a slap in the face if you put him in now. Like, like I I was talking to Dom out there, and he said, "Um, they'll put him in now, or they should put him in now. And I said, that doesn't do anything for him. Maybe it does something for grandchildren and great grandchildren and family who can visit and say that was my that was my guy, but I think it's almost Maddie more of a slap in the face if you did put kind him in. Of, now. Kind of like the the sympathetic vote in, in getting in. I, I, I'm with you on that, and you, you're talking about a legacy that's just very convoluted. That, that's you know when I think about Pete Rose, that's what I think of because the the weight of what he did is is very significant and there's no ignoring that because that's just the one thing for me personally as a fan of not only baseball but all kinds of sports is to know that for the most part what we're seeing is true right and guys aren't cutting corners whether it's steroids or betting or things like that i'm not naive enough to think that those things don't happen and probably are continuing to happen to a certain degree behind the scenes But I think of Pete Rose and for me growing up here in Ohio and playing baseball for years and obviously becoming a Reds fan when I moved here and Brandon Phillips was the reason why I became a Reds fan. And when you really start to become when I started to become that, there was just no ignoring the the name of Pete Rose and how much he meant to that franchise and to Reds fans all over the place because he was so good at the sport. There's no denying the greatness of of Pete Rose. And when you look at how he went about his business, this is a dude that earned the nickname Charlie Hustle for a reason because he played the game just so hard and he is the all-time hit leader. He's the hit king. And this is a guy that didn't even really hit for power that much. I mean, you're talking about the most home runs he had in the season was 16. So he was just a guy that stood in the box and was going to pepper the baseball around the field and just stress you out that way and not one home run during the 44 game hit streak. crazy right yeah. just absolutely crazy what he was able to do uh with the bat yeah. in his hand but it's just an anchor that will always be attached to his name unfortunately and i know for a lot of people that's something that you can't forgive i think here in our neck of the woods because of the emotion that's attached to the local baseball team an yeah. hour and a half away from us reds fans are always going to give him a, a little bit more wiggle room sure but the the league and the hall of fame was never going to allow that, even though you go up to the Hall of Fame and <laughs> some of his bats and all that stuff are, are there in Cooperstown. So I've come to the realization that there may be some mistakes you never stop paying for. But I also am here to tell you that I've I've not changed my complete opinion because I think he gambled with his legacy because he knows Rule 21. It's in every clubhouse and it's been in every clubhouse. Mm-hmm. Any player, any ump, any league official, any employee who bets any sum, 
and any game You're is done. permanently ineligible. You're cooked. Done. Yeah. He knew it. He gambled with it. The rule says if you bet, it doesn't say for or against, by the way. It doesn't say for or against. So this whole argument about I only bet him to win, it's not a great one. Yeah. Um, because it doesn't excuse what he did. Because a lot of people believe that he placed his financial interest, or some people say addiction, ahead of the Reds. Period. Mm-hmm. That that was more important to him than his legacy. Or it could be very simply that he liked to bet and he thought that what he was doing was justified, that he really wasn't. It was just side money on a game that he was managing to win anyway, yeah. playing to win anyway. But I will tell you this. I've come to this realization. I think what the Houston Astros were accused of and maybe proven to have done is worse. Cheating. Cheating to win is worse than betting to win. And I, but I come back to what I originally said, that this all crumbles completely if the fans find out their games are fixed. Some of them are, and I'm not saying he fixed the games, Mm -hmm. but we we really don't know to the degree that he managed all of the games that he bet on and the ones that he didn't. So he gambled with his legacy. I have no real energy towards keeping him out. I have no real energy of forcing him in. I think he's in a place right now that hopefully he's at peace. Maybe his family's at peace. Maybe one day, decades from now, they will put him in. And you know time is a great healer of intensity. And we romance things. We make movies about it. Shoeless Joe Jackson. Mm. And all Like we do. Yeah. And so time may get him in for his future generations to cherish. If he doesn't, it doesn't change what the player he was. We talk about him today as a Hall of Famer, mm-hmm. even though he's not there. But those years of 84, 85, 86, and 87 as a manager, I don't know if he'd ever take back. He never really wanted to go fully down that road of, he did sign the baseballs, I'm sorry, I bet, thinking that would be the key. If I just admit it publicly, mm-hmm. they'll soften. But he was already banned, and when he was banned in 89, or I think it was 89, when he was banned, the Hall of Fame said, well, we can't make a guy eligible who's, for voting who's been banned. And then we are where we are. So, but I do try to compare. I'm not happy that Barry Bonds owns that record over Hank Aaron. But guys have been cheating and looking for an advantage in sports since the beginning of time. Whether it's changing for the to examine pitchers' gloves now and the ball every inning and all that, like, they have to protect their own game. And if they don't, then it is going to teeter. But I'm here to tell you that you would want Pete Rose on your team yeah. every day. He was a dude. And there are things that I don't admire completely, but he was human. And I'm not here to tell you he got a raw deal. I don't think he got a raw deal because I think he made a choice and he knew the consequences if he got caught. And when he did... He tried to keep the lie brewing, and hopefully it just went away. Um, but that doesn't work. Uh, that's the oldest rule in the book. Tell the truth now or pay later, and he certainly has. But I hope he's at peace. I hope his family's at peace. And Pete Rose, the legend that he is and was, will never be forgotten. But I agree with your sentiment. If he played for the Seattle Mariners, I, the the sentiment wouldn't be the same or something like but. The fact he was a red and the big red machine and he meant so much to these guys and guys he played with, hopefully that will stand the test of time.